let's start um, with the first presentation. I'm very happy to introduce uh, Oza Ergil, who is the CPO at Aquila Capital. He's in the sector for a long, long time. He's at Aquila not only dealing with solar, but with wind. Before that, he was um, working at LightSource um, BP. And um, he's also um, the head of the sustainability um, work stream at Solar Power Europe, the association of the solar sector in Europe. I'm so happy to have you with us. Ozar, the floor is yours. Thank you, Michael. Very kind of you. And the, uh, thank you for the invitation. It is a real privilege to address those uh, select uh, audience. And I hope you can see my um, screen I'm sharing. Yes, all good. All right. So uh, I will try to keep it interesting beginning of the, uh, the presentations, a long uh, session and to make it a bit more memorable for everyone. The uh, world is becoming, we can say many things, right? More, I mean, it's becoming warmer and becoming more crowded, becoming, and the, uh, I don't know, pollu polluted, right? And the, uh, but we are living on a very rare planet, right? I mean, the, we haven't seen anyone like this, but as human being, we are treating it uh, very um, irrationally. The world is becoming more VUCA, right? I mean, especially supply chains, I would like to bring you this concept and the, uh, to your attention again. So it's more volatile, more uncertain, more complex and more ambiguous, right? I mean, we, we suffer from this for, for a while, especially the uh, pandemic and the, uh, the triggered bigger fluctuations, bigger uncertainties, right? I mean, what we see, um, supply is security main concern and the uh, cost is fluctuating and the, uh, it's becoming again uncertain, volatile and the uh, innovation creating an ambiguity right on the complexity and the, uh, and the every, uh, every supplier, every industry trying to bring new innovation just to be more efficient, competitive and the uh, and but we, we will be seeing that innovation for sustainability will be a future, right? And yeah, and sustainability is not a challenge; is a kind of enabler, right? I mean, so how can we um, make solar more attractive? And the solar is more aff most affordable, most scalable source of energy, and when it's a kind of solution, right? I mean, it's not like a palm oil or coffee bean. Uh, you you produce the kind of uh, certification, but solar is a kind is a so important solution for reversing the climate change. So it's it's given us a kind of responsibility, right? I mean that's why we should make it um, so so clean in all senses, right? In in produce while producing it, and the uh, it should have a kind of positive impact on environment and this on the people. Uh, so that there should not be any wrongdoing when we introduce new product into the market. So what are the four ch challenges and the EBC in the market, right? I mean, first one, as I said, supply security. There are some elements not equally distributed over the nations, right? I mean, there's a concentration, lithium mainly coming from Australia and the copper coming from Chile, but process in different country. So this is another complex organization, a complex network and the, uh, it is creating also uncertainties, right? And the, uh, that's why some of the elements and the, due to their scarcity and the, uh, the impact on the, our business, we consider them as a kind of critical mineral, right? And if you look at the, um, the net zero ambition to just to reach out this, ta those targets, we should mine equal amount of mine uh, we uh, we took out from Earth in entire history. So we are the human humankind may be mining like last 5,000 years just to achieve uh, the net zero targets. We should mine same amount of minerals should come from Earth, right? I mean, we should mine in. So there are lots of risks. There are lots of uncertainties. And the, uh, this is something we, we, we should keep in mind. And also, Price are you send that fluctuating 
it's much bigger uh, the amp amplitude, right? I mean, of course, it was fluctuating in the past, but now we reach a kind of equilibrium, and the any any disturbance create a big um, shock waves, and this is due to the effect that okay, exactly the same reason when you said that that there will be a pandemic, you are rushing to the supermarket buying all the toilet papers, right? I mean, the same thing happening in the. Uh, solar industry or another industry, when you see that, oh, there will be shortage in the panels, let's go buy panels. And you're creating a kind of shockwave in, in ent entire supply chain and the boom policy price is going up on all the, uh, the transportation prices are going up. And the, uh, <clears throat> we, we observe there's a more and more new technologies coming into market without properly tested, right? And the big panels, this is the power curve per, per panel, right? I mean. So especially after 2019, we, we observe a kind of increase and big panels coming into market, the big technologies coming into market. And this is creating another uncertainty. And the uh, so which panel we are going to use? Do we want to be a guinea pig or do we want to be a wait for and see? Because we are building a project in 2027, which panel I'm going to use, right? And the, should I bet for the uh, ether junction or a tandem? Mm -hmm. So these are all uncertainties and the uh, uh, the developers should uh, work with. And innovation, right? I mean, innovation is very incremental our business, right? I mean, we are talking about 20%, 22%, et cetera. So it's like the electric bulb was not a kind of incremental, uh, the innovation of the can candle. So we, we need, we, we should, have another innovation, maybe it's a quantum leap, right? I mean, because as long as we continue on this efficiency range, I mean, we will need more land and the land, especially in developed countries, right, is limited, right? I mean, when, when, when you see that a power plant in a kind of fertile area, and the, uh, this is very pity, right? I mean, that's why land development will be moving to more difficult terrain Right, I mean the uh, people. There's no people living there. There's nothing there. Maybe a desert or rocky mountain. So then innovation should come, right? I mean, how can we put the panel this difficult uh, land? And the uh, that's why we're always talking about not only innovation for SOE, innovation for the sustainability, and the uh, so that we can use the land wisely. And also there will be agri PV uh, at the hype because there the world will become more warmer, right? And the, uh, so we need some shades and the uh, PV will play important role on this because some crops, they need shades and they cannot uh, grow uh, with the 1.5 or two degrees uh, higher. And last but not least, um, supply chain transparency and other challenge. I mean, it's a challenge for, not only for our industry, but uh, for all industries, but um, uh, our products, as a kind of concern in last um, 40, 43, three to two, months, two years. So we have, because our supply chains are not designed to be transparent, right? And the, now we have the spectrum, right? We have code of conduct and the, our suppliers of the upstream saying that, okay, um, I comply with the rules, but we observe that when you ask, okay, where do you buy your um, uh, subcomponents and where is the raw material coming? And th those questions becoming difficult to answer when you go more upstream. So we should move our supply chain transparency to in a kind of um, more transparent level so that the uh, developer can say that I am buying this module from this company and this company has very stainless supply chain or value chain, right? I mean, they, the, uh, the carbon footprint they're producing, maybe they are using low carbon aluminum, recycled aluminum or no aluminum, right? And no frame. So these are the things, these are the stories that developers would like to say and they would like to tell. And the, uh, this will be new value. And the, uh, this, it, is, it will not be about the, the cost of the uh, cost per watt peak, but it will be a kind of how transparent, how sustainable our products are, right? And so that there will be price to pay that. So in the beginning, for the time being, it is more about compliance. I mean, checklist and the uh, the questionnaires, 
but we should be moving to more to commitment level so that we will understand each other, right? And what um, all the stakeholders expectation along the uh, value chain. So how can we uh, solve this complex problem together, right? I mean, problem is complex because cross-cultural, cross-industry, cross different political games. So this only, uh, this can only be solved by the um, joint problem solving and the continuous improvement. That's why the Solar Power Europe, we kicked off the Solar Stewardship Initiative last year. And this is a kind of platform um, we can collaborate and the, uh, we can collaborate, understand each other. And uh, this can, as I said, this can only be solved by collaboration and to collaborate, we need more transparency and the, to trust each other. So what is Solar Stewardship Initiative? It's a solar specific, uh, the assurance program. So that uh, the, uh, as I said, stakeholder can understand each other. I mean, the upstream can understand what is the expectation of downstream, downstream understand what are the limitations of the upstream. So that, so it's quite big interest and this sponsors or supporters numbers going up, we have, more than 30, 30 sponsors and the uh, more than 50 organizations supporting the initiative. And the, we have also uh, the uh, lenders like uh, IIB, IFC, um, EIB and IFC uh, in the uh, financial side. So if you're not a um, member and your supporter, I mean, uh, this is a very good platform uh, for you to, for your voice heard and the, uh, and the sponsors of this event also, I can see that they're also the sponsor of uh, this initiative. So basically in a nutshell, right, it is, um, it, it's a kind of, uh, our aim is to ensure the energy transition just, inclusive, and the respect to human rights. So we would like to hear everybody and the, uh, all the stakeholders um, uh, the included in this, and it will form into a kind of multi-stakeholder initiative. If you look at the different industries had similar difficulties and in absence of such an orchestra, uh, the initiative, they develop their own initiative. Everybody, for instance, if you take a uh, footwear, Nike and Adidas using different uh, checklists, right? Because they couldn't build a kind of multi-stakeholder initiative. And the, in the only for food industry, we are talking about like at least seven different standards. I mean. SSI, Solar Stewardship Initiative, uh, aiming to be a kind of global standard, right? And the, uh, that's why everybody's participation is important to have a kind of consensus, right? And the, um, and the uh, establishing a mechanism to create supply chain transparency, ensuring in integrity beyond the European U Union or uh, UK. And most important element is here, it continues improvement. It, is, it will not be a kind of, go, no go, or is binary, okay, you failed, you, are, you pass. Because we will give chance to everyone, right? Everybody, I mean, developer SM, and we will be getting a kind of gap analysis. Where do I have some uh, areas for improvement? So that everybody will be given a fair chance to, to make progress, right? And the progress will be visible. And the, uh, so it will be also motivating the, uh, the suppliers and the buyers. And the, uh, and the it's aiming to prepare the community to upcoming laws. I mean, if, especially in, uh, in all legislation, it will come starting from Europe soon and the due diligence law. And it will be compliant with the, um, the law. I mean, if you are complying with the solar stewardship initiative, it will be a kind of license and the, uh, uh, the passport, you can go green lane and the, without stopping anywhere. And building confidence on regulators, customers, business partners, okay, probably we will end up a kind of uh, labeling, right? I mean, if the products or the companies are labeled and it's a kind of certification so that this will create a comfort or the, uh, with, the, um, with the buyers and sellers. We kicked the pilot off um, last year and, and the, uh, now, we are doing some pilot audits and the assessments and the uh, our target is to have this uh, global standard uh, by the end of this year and the uh, it's quite compressed uh, timeline and the uh, 
So as I said, I mean, uh, we would like everybody's to participation in very inclusively and to make it a kind of global standard. And the, uh, in a nutshell, and the, I'm conscious of time and the one minute over. Um, so our product is a promise, right? Our, and our, um, I'm talking about solar <laughs> in this uh, forum. And is a kind of a solution to the climate change. And the, um, so we should remove all the frictions and the, uh, for uh, the money to flow the projects and the, pro the products flow to projects, right? And the, uh, so that we can generate more energy and the clean energy for the and for entire planet, and if, while doing this, and if we should not create negative impact for no no one, and the, for our for the environment as well, right? I mean, innovation and the, the way we do the things, and they should drastically change if it is not there. Otherwise, supply chains will be redesigned, and if we are talking about bringing the uh, supply chain back to Europe. There are pros and cons, and the uh, but this is these are very serious decisions, and the uh, and the uh, the buyers are determined to see that um, we have we are buying the products very very uh, the, uh, with a very great amount of the peace of mind, right? I mean assurance, and this is this is basically what I would like to tell, and the. Uh, uh, happy to discuss afterwards and the uh, the for Q and A's, but um, yeah, uh, back to you, Michael. Thanks, Ozar, for this uh, great overview. Um, actually, I think who also would like to um, learn more about uh, Ozar thinking about uh, procurement should uh, listen to Redefining Energy. He uh, recently gave a great interview in a podcast there. Um, I think it's also very revealing. Um, okay, Ozar, I think um, we don't do any questions now. We do that later in the panel on which you uh, will also sit yeah. and uh, we continue with a conference. Thanks a lot. And thank you, Michael.